I'm David Toman, author of Nootropics Expert and this YouTube channel. In this video, you'll discover the nootropic benefits of Pyracetam. Now, this is an update to a video I made on Pyracetam a few years ago. In this video, I'll tell you what Pyracetam is, where it comes from, and why experienced neurohackers use it. I'll share with you some clinical studies demonstrating the benefits of Paracetam, and I'll tell you how much Paracetam to use, any potential side effects, and where to buy Paracetam. So why should you want to listen to this video about Paracetam? Well, because Paracetam has been shown to increase cerebral circulation, improve creativity and verbal fluency, boost memory, learning and recall, improve mood, and for the treatment of tardive dyskinesia. Sound good? Now, before we get started, please hit the subscribe button for my channel. It doesn't cost you anything, but it helps YouTube to suggest this channel to someone else who may need this information too. And hit the share button so others can learn about Paracetam and how it may help them deal with their brain health issues. So stay with me for a few minutes and I'll tell you more about Paracetam. So let's get started. Paracetam is a water-soluble ampicine nootropic in the racetam class of compounds. It was developed by a fellow of famous Russian psychologist Ivan Pavlov, by Dr. Cornelius Gurgeyu, who first synthesized paracetam at the Belgian-based pharmaceutical company UCB Pharma in 1964. As a cyclic derivative of GABA, paracetam was first intended to be a calming type of drug for motion sickness. But in spite of its connection with GABA, paracetam didn't show any behavior associated with this calming neurotransmitter. And it cannot directly affect GABA receptors. Instead, Dr. Gayer discovered that paracetam was able to boost cognition even in healthy people. The company launched this new drug as Neutropil in Europe in the early 1970s, and the success of Nootropil soon allowed UCB Pharma to expand its operations, which led to many new pharmaceutical drugs. Dr. Gugeo coined the term nootropic to describe this class of cognitive and optimizing compounds. Nootropic was derived from the Greek words for mind, or nu, and towards, or tropain. Paracetam is sold as a prescription drug in Europe, in South America, and in countries around the world under various brand names. In the United States, paracetam is sold as an over-the-counter research compound and labeled as paracetam or neutropyl. Dozens of racetam derivatives have since been developed based on the original paracetam. All synthetic compounds, racetam share a pyrrolidone nucleus. Paracetam modulates AMPA and NMDA receptors and improves the function of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. People use paracetam to boost learning and memory. AMPA and NMDA receptors along with acetylcholine are associated with learning and memory. And when paracetam is stacked with a choline supplement, its effects are even more pronounced. Researchers have shown in hundreds of clinical studies that paracetam significantly improves learning and memory. Paracetam also increases cerebral blood flow, or blood flow in your brain. Blood delivers oxygen and glucose needed for cellular metabolism, and it helps carry away cellular waste, critical for a highly optimized brain. So if you're thinking about experimenting with any of the racetams, I recommend starting with paracetam, because it works, it's safe, and it's cheaper than all the other nootropics in the racetam family. Paracetam boosts brain health and function in several ways, but two in particular stand out. First, paracetam modulates AMPA and NMDA receptors in the brain, and it improves the flow of acetylcholine and sensitivity and density of acetylcholine receptors. A German study conducted with lab mice showed that paracetam elevated NMDA receptor density and normalized the way these receptors worked with glutamate similar to that of a healthy brain. Deficits at the level of the NMDA receptors could be one of the mechanisms of action underlying age-related cognitive decline. And the researchers concluded that paracetam showed cognitive enhancing benefits. This effect on NMDA receptor sites is directly related to our interest in using paracetam for long-term potentiation and the support of long-term memory formation. Neuroplasticity is dependent on activation of NMDA receptors, and this neuroplasticity is at the heart of memory formation. 
Reviews of paracetam used by neurohackers frequently report the return of long-lost memories. Further proof of the efficacy of using paracetam to support learning and memory. And the second way the paracetam works in the brain is it increases cerebral blood flow. Several studies have shown how paracetam positively influences brain blood flow. Cerebral blood flow is critical for the highly optimized brain. Blood delivers oxygen and glucose needed for cellular metabolism, and it helps carry away cellular waste. Strokes can be caused by an interruption in cerebral blood flow. Starving parts of the brain of oxygen and glucose. A double-blind, placebo-controlled study was done with 24 stroke patients. One group received 2,400 milligrams of paracetam twice daily, and the other received a placebo. Before the treatment, both groups were com comparable in performance during language tasks. The study found that paracetam improved recovery of various language functions, and this effect was attributed to the increased blood circulation to areas of the brain related to language. The placebo group showed very little improvement in the area of language. Pyracetam helps increase blood flow in the brain. It improves oxygen levels. It enhances glucose use in brain cells. It maintains brain cell mitochondria and ATP synthesis. Paracetam is also a potent modulator of AMPA-sensitive glutamate receptors in neurons. It increases the density of specific binding sites for AMPA in neural synapses. Glutamate is a primary excitatory neurotransmitter in your brain. This glutamate activity, boosted by using paracetam, affects alertness, focus, attention, memory, and learning. And one of the reasons why neurohackers consistently report that paracetam improves mental performance and memory. Paracetam increases high affinity choline uptake which is the process that occurs in choline nerve endings, and it facilitates acetylcholine formation. Boosting acetylcholine with paracetam produces a powerful effect on learning and memory. Paracetam also boosts choline receptor density in the frontal cortex. This area of your brain is used for working memory and decision making. Denosine triphosphate energy is critical to your brain's survival. Brain cells must produce all of their own ATP from glucose and oxygen. This brain energy carbohydrate metabolism depends on cerebral blood flow. And paracetam enhances this glucose utilization and increases ATP synthesis in mitochondria. And paracetam has an analgesic or anti-pain benefit. The anti-pain action is linked to paracetam's anti-inflammatory properties. Inflammation can cause pain, and studies have shown that paracetam can have a profound effect on pain. Paracetam boosts acetylcholine, so you must add a good choline source when you're using it. Try using alpha-GPC or CDP choline with paracetam, and you give your brain the choline that it needs. Most neurohackers reported noticeable benefit from paracetam after about two weeks. Consider that paracetam is modulating your brain's chemistry, and this change is unlikely to occur immediately. Your brain needs some time to adjust to the new change in acetylcholine levels and how it uses it. Increased cerebral blood flow takes a while to bring up levels of oxygen and nutrients, and for your neuronal cells to respond. Your mileage may vary depending on your own neural chemical makeup. Now, many suggest starting with an attack dose for the first three days. A 3,000 milligram attack dose of paracetam, for example, to start with theoretically gets more of the supplement into your system right away, so it takes less time to build up before you start feeling the effects. And from there, step down to a maintenance dose and vary the quantity until you find your sweet spot. Once you begin to notice the effects of paracetam, you're likely to feel a mood boost, less social anxiety, heighten creativity, improve verbal fluency, and better memory. Paracetam does boost your brain's use of acetylcholine, so you will likely find that adding a good choline source, like CDP choline or alpha-GPC to your paracetam stack helps. We have plenty of evidence that paracetam improves memory in animals and people who are suffering from many types of cognitive impairment. Now keep in mind that most of the scientific research available for nootropics is done for sick people trying to get well. The return on investment for research at institutions and universities comes from treating diseases. 
and not from helping ordinary biohackers like us trying to get a competitive advantage at work or in school. Now we can, however, extrapolate the findings from these studies and learn if and how something like paracetam can help our memory and cognition. Now once in a while, someone does take the time to conduct such a study on healthy people, and like this one done with normal healthy volunteers. Researchers gave this healthy group of participants four 400 milligram capsules of paracetam three times a day, or 1200 milligrams total, for 14 days. No effects on memory were observed after seven days during this experiment. But after 14 days, verbal learning has significantly increased. Researchers in Belgium, where paracetam originated, where it was developed by Dr. Gugeu, conducted an analysis of 19 double-blind placebo-controlled studies done with patients suffering from dementia or cognitive impairment and who took paracetam. The results of this meta-analysis demonstrated the difference between people who used paracetam or used a placebo. The end result of this analysis provided compelling evidence for the usefulness of paracetam in a diverse group of people with cognitive impairment. Now, several studies and user reviews have shown that paracetam dosage makes a difference. And unlike some other nootropics where you start at a lower dose and you work your way up, with paracetam, I recommend that you start with a higher dose. A study in Germany with 78 elderly patients showed that there was a significant difference in cognition improvement while supplementing with paracetam at 1,600 milligrams three times a day. There was no difference in cognition with patients who only used 800 milligrams three times per day. Paracetam is used around the world to treat cognitive impairment in aging, brain injuries, dementia, and Alzheimer's disease. Now, several studies show that paracetam enhances ATP production, mitochondrial membranes, and neurite outgrowth in neurons. Now, in this study, scientists investigated the effects of paracetam on mitochondrial function. Human brain cells were treated with paracetam under normal conditions and under conditions initiating aging and damage done by reactive oxygen species, and with cells representing early-stage Alzheimer's disease. The cells representing Alzheimer's conditions showed impaired chondrial function under the baseline conditions. Paracetam was able to restore cells and shift mitochondrial function back to normal. The researchers showed that paracetam is able to repair mitochondria in those with mild Alzheimer's and return cell function back to normal. Tardive dyskinesia is a serious and often disabling movement disorder often caused by meds that are used to block dopamine receptors. There's not really any proven standard treatment yet for this disorder in mainstream medicine. But this is where nootropics come to the rescue once again. A study conducted at Beersheba Mental Health Center at Ben Gurion University in Israel with 40 patients suffering with tardive dyskinesia. The study participants were randomly assigned either 4,800 milligrams per day of paracetam or a placebo for four weeks. The study authors concluded at the end of the study that paracetam appears to be effective in reducing symptoms of tardive dyskinesia. The recommended paracetam dosage is 1,600 milligrams three times a day. One paracetam dose in the morning one in the early afternoon, and one later in the afternoon. You will likely want to start with an attack dose when you're first starting out with paracetam. Refer back earlier in this video to the section called How Does Paracetam Feel for a more detailed explanation of attack doses. Supplementing with paracetam varies wildly between neurohackers. Experimenting and finding the dose where you experience the most benefit is key. You may find that a lower dose works well for you, or you may find you need to increase your dose even more. Dosing paracetam is directly related to your own unique neurochemistry. Paracetam is non-toxic, so it's considered well tolerated and safe. As with many of the racetams, paracetam can cause headaches because it boosts the use of acetylcholine in your brain. Choline supplements like alpha-GPC or CDP-choline can help you avoid this side effect. Many neurohackers find that stacking paracetam with a choline supplement boosts the effects on improved memory and cognition. And this is supported in several clinical studies. Paracetam is sold in tablet, capsule, and powder form. 
Tablets and capsules are usually 800 milligrams each. I recommend Cosmic Nootropic or Science Bio, who both sell paracetam as a research compound. It is sold to be used in an academic laboratory research setting. They go on to state, nothing we sell is intended for nor is it manufactured for diagnostic or therapeutic purposes in humans. But don't let that put you off trying paracetam or any of the other racetams for that matter because the seller legally needs to use that verbiage so that they don't get in trouble with the drug police here in America. In Europe, Asia, and South America, and other countries around the world, paracetam is a prescription drug and sold under many different brand names, including Nootropol. Now see the transcript for this video on my website, Nootropics Expert, to see the other brand names used to sell paracetam in your country. You will find a link to that transcript down below in the notes section under this video. So that's my report on paracetam. If you want to see links to the studies I talked about, go to my website, Nootropics Expert, and search for paracetam. Or click on the link in the notes section below this video. Once you're at my website, Nootropics Expert, you'll find a full transcript of this video. And you'll find dozens of articles on all the well-known nootropics over on Nootropics Expert. If you haven't already, download your free copy of Secrets of the Optimized Brain. It's nearly 100 pages, and it contains details on 92 of the most popular nootropics used today. And my four-time award-winning book, the second edition of Head First, The Complete Guide to Healing and Optimizing Your Brain with Nootropic Supplements, is once again available. Yahoo! <laughs> Head First, the second edition, is 962 pages and is available in hardcover, paperback, and for iPad or Kindle. You can get your copy at any major bookseller, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Balboa Press, Apple Books, Walmart, and others. You will find a link to these stores down below in the notes section of this video. And did I mention that Head First won four awards? You really need to get a copy if you haven't already. It's available worldwide. And if you could use some personal help with choosing the right nootropics or figuring out how to deal with your own brain health issues, consider booking a personal consultation with me. You'll find a link to my calendar down below in the notes section below this video. And if you want to see more videos on all the best nootropics used today, subscribe to this channel before you leave. I'll be putting up new videos on nootropics and optimizing your brain every week. I'm David Toman, author of Nootropics Expert.